silence, asking the Lord to bless all our intentions, all the petitions we bring to the foot of the cross of Jesus. In a week's time, we will be celebrating Passion Friday, the last Friday in the season of Lent. We implore on the Lord to bless our families, those who need medical attention, those looking for jobs, careers, to bless our children in their education as they write their exams, for all couples having problems in their married life, couples wanting children, to better our housing facilities, for those who have health problems, each one of us seeking different intentions for ourselves and for others. Let us in faith come to this Eucharistic table, asking the Lord to give us His grace to live a holy life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we come close to Holy Week in a day's time, we are reminded how the Lord was journeying towards this very impending moment of His death, which He was well aware of. Jesus does not go defeated to His suffering. He goes with great faith, hope and courage that the Father is with Him. And it is with this faith that we come to this Eucharist to listen carefully to what He is asking us to do, how to better the spiritual experience, the spiritual journey, so that we can live a good and harmonious life in our families and in society. Let us now surrender to the Lord all our moments of sinfulness, our weaknesses. Tell the Lord we are sorry for our sins. Resolve to make a good confession by visiting the sacrament of penance so that our lives are open, our lives are full of grace, to celebrate Holy Week meaningfully. You came to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. You, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we will prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who prop mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Our response, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. Can you repeat? In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. 
I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Our response, in my distress, I call upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. Response, in my distress, I call upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the neither world enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. Response, in my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Response, in my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Kindly stand for the gospel. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Glory and grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. The Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for your good work, but for blasphemy. You are a man. You are making yourself a God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, You are God's? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say to the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into this world, blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe in me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. They tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My and brothers, this encounter between Jesus and the Jews, we must remember that Jesus himself was a Jew. He knew what the Jewish law meant because he was very well educated in the Jewish customs and the Jewish scriptures. Jesus already when he was found in the temple by his parents, if you recall, he was discussing matters with the elders. That means to say, Jesus already when he was a young child, only knew what the prophets and the law thought. And here we have Jesus in confrontation very early in John chapter 10, what we heard today is that they had a problem with him. The problem was so severe, my dear friends, that the gospel tells us that they wanted to stone him. Not like you want to stone a dog sometime to shoo it away. But the Jewish custom was, if anyone committed certain types of sin, like the adulterous woman, they wanted to stone her to death. Same way in the gospel of today, 
when the Jews come to stone Jesus, meaning they came to kill him. They wanted to kill him by stoning him. They have not come to throw stones at us. Some people throw stones at a dog to shoo it away. They have come there to stone Jesus to kill him. And the charge is given in the gospel of today. Jesus says, if I am doing good, why are you trying to kill me? And they say, we are not trying to kill you for the good things, but because you commit the sin of blasphemy. So one of the sins in Judaism, even as of today, is to call oneself that I am God. And Jesus claimed to them that he is God. As he says in the Gospel of today, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Meaning to say, the Father and I are one. That means to say, he himself is God. And this is what the Jews were not ready to accept. And in fact, they become so serious with him that towards the end, what we will celebrate next week will be his own crucifixion. Jesus realized, my dear friends, that being one with the Father meant that he would have problems in life. He could have chosen not to say it. He could have chosen not to be harmed, not to be hurt, not to be killed. But Jesus was convinced that the Father was in him, that the Father in he was one. How often, my dear friends, I feel sometimes we are not used to being convinced of what we believe. The Gospel of today ends by saying that many people who came to believe in Jesus, not in the temple, not among the Jews, but outside in the wilderness, in the desert, where John the Baptist was preaching. Meaning to say that sometimes we begin to say to ourselves that only among us God will save us. But the Gospel evangelists today, St. John tells us, that Jesus is out from far away from the Jews, away from the temple, in the wilderness. It is there that people come to believe in him. You and I for years have been praying to him, listening to his word, celebrating various devotions, receiving his body and blood, believing in the good news, the gospel. How much actually do you and I believe? What is it that you and I have to believe? First of all, what the gospels and the Bible teaches us. Various methods, various teachings are there about our faith. How many of us totally believe? Belief does not mean saying, yes Lord, but not doing it. Belief means doing what Jesus is saying. Doing exactly what he says. The forgiveness aspect, the charity aspect, the penance aspect, the life of prayer, being in relationship with God and with others. These are the teachings of what we are asked to believe. Wherever we fail in our belief, probably we will receive stones. And I am sure none of us want to be stoned. All of us want God's grace. As we enter this holy week, it means it's a call to holiness. We cannot enter holy week if our life is sinful. If you have not gone for the sacrament of penance, not made our confession, we cannot enter holy week in a manner that is required of us. All of us should make whatever you want to believe or don't believe about the sacrament of penance. It is an invitation by the church given to believe that it is through that sacrament God forgives our sins and gives us a grace to live a holy life. Let us make a resolve to visit the sacrament of penance if we have not yet done so, so that Holy Week becomes truly a spiritual encounter for each one of us. Let us have these conversations in our homes, encourage our family members to visit the sacrament, experience God's forgiveness, God who loves us, God who wants to be gracious to us, gives us this very important occasion to have this deep spiritual encounter with Him. Let us not lose out on this occasion. Seek His forgiveness and experience the grace in this week. In the silence of our hearts, as we present the gifts of bread and wine, which will be transformed into the very body and the blood of Jesus, we bring to Jesus all our pain, our hurt, our sinfulness. We bring to Jesus all our petitions, asking Him to transform them into sacred units to live a holy life.
Hey, my dear friends, and this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant to merciful God that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty God and Eternal Father. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, worthy angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with all the apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Conscious of the presence of our beloved Lord and Saviour Jesus in his most precious body and blood, we now prepare ourselves to receive him, that his grace, his spirit enters our lives. All over our country today, the church invited us to a life of prayer, penance and fasting, Essentially, that we may have good elections in our country. Let us place this petition as we pray the Lord's Prayer to give us a government which is fair, just and concerned about the needs of the poor. With all our needs, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and the joy of the suffering Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us share some sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he was rejected by his own because he believed that he was in the Father and the Father was in him. He came into our world to take away our sins and promise us eternal life. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Truly say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn shall be, my heart's like a fruit.
let us pray may the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us o lord and may it always dry far from us all that would do us harm through christ our lord amen grant we pray almighty god that these your servants who seek the grace of your protection may be from every evil and serve you in peace of mind through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen the celebration of the eucharist is ended Let us go forth to give glory to God by our lives. Yes, I invite you now to close your eyes and bow your heads. And ask the Lord that this season of Holy Week that we will soon enter in a few hours from now may bring numerous graces into each of our lives. into our families in our homes in our parishes pray it at the foot of the cross that holy week does not remain with mere ritualism in the many prayer services processions reflections that will be made in this week not only in our parishes but all over our archdiocese may benefit each and every person every family we may truly encounter the lord as he journeys into jerusalem on palm sunday rejoicing gloriously entering his father's house Let us stay with him at the last supper. Let us not walk out like Judas. Let us stay with him as he asked his apostles in Gethsemane. Let us surrender to the various services, the way of the cross, the reflections in churches on his day of death. Let we may truly feel the pain of death. that we may truly enter this death to experience our own little resurrection at easter we pray for this grace that this holy week may make us our families holy families we make our prayer through christ our lord amen take the final hymn our professional hymn is ave maria <clears throat> 